So good evening and welcome to the class on approach to an MBA interview. Over the next one and a half, two hours, I'll try to take you through the most important ingredients of an interview, especially an MBA interview. And also we look at certain forms that are already out, like I am Indoor or I am Coicode, et cetera. And how do you go about filling those forms? What are the, uh, how do you write a SOP itself, SOPE in that sense? So that it will be uh, a complete overview for you before you get into actual mock interview, getting mock interviewed and you know improving upon yourself. Much before that, we thought this could be a session which will kind of set you started as far as the interview is concerned. Okay, so that's the endeavor with which we do it. Let's take up the most. Uh, we will do that also, Vinod. It will be on our website and also on YouTube in that sense. So first and foremost, what is important to realize is what is this external environment before we get into the actual interview itself. So let's look at one very, very basic question. Why are interviews a part of the selection process? Interviews are a selection process typically for MBA interviews and probably not for most of the other postgraduate interviews in the world itself, forget about in India. And I think the reason is very clear. Unlike a science interview or a arts interview or for that matter a, a, a medical interview in that sense of the word too, what a per, when a person does an MBA, he may be an engineer, he or she may be an engineer, a BCom, BA, BSc, B, or even an MBA based in that sense of the word. So why? So any person in the world can do an MBA. Because of the fact, because of that, it is very imperative for the institute which is trying to, you know, finally give you admission to figure out whether you are doing it because everyone else is doing it or is there a very serious reason for you to do it, for point number one. But there's another reasons also. Till the time you get into an interview room, you are a number for them. You are a registration number with some marks in uh, the various sections and probably they also have your marks for your 10th, 12th and degree at best. So therefore it is very imperative for them to know that is this mark, how, do, how, how can anybody differentiate between a person with 89% and 91%? Yes, they will give you some marks uh, because of your effort to get 91 instead of 89. But are you going to be a good manager tomorrow? Are you going to be a good leader tomorrow? It's very difficult for people to find out only through just return analysis, etc. Kind of thing. That's one of the reasons why every interview becomes, uh, every institute takes interview as a very, very important uh, ingredient for their final selection. In fact, over the last few years, they have almost replaced the group discussions and have now con all, uh, almost given interview uh, a very, very important position in the final selection. Even after getting through uh, with a very 100 percentile, there are very, very high chances that people do not make it to the final selection. And also, you could be just about the border and there are enough reasons. If you just do your interview well, you can easily make it. And that's one of the reasons why interviews for you become very, very important. But before that, let's take up some of the important issues and let it let them aside for ourselves. Interview panel composition. Typically, two to three people are there in the panel. Um, in some institutes like I am Calcutta, at least they also have one uh, alumnus. SPJN has an alumnus of their interview inter institute also sitting in uh, uh, conducting their interviews. Otherwise, in general, between two and three is the maximum composition of a panel, except of course FMS. FMS has sometimes five to six people too, okay? There are two types of interviews. In fact, let me just tell you very quickly, there are two types of interviews on a broad scale. One is the non-stress interviews and one is the stress interviews. Today, I was just listening to, in fact, I was taking feedback from a student uh, who has gone to a MICA interview only today. Vinny, I don't know whether he is there today. His Question, he wanted to do, let's say, uh, he, he wanted to do Mica uh, or other, uh, he wanted to take up Mica because he was interested in movies, he was interested in the film industry and he was interested in entertainment industry. The whole 15-20 minutes of that interview 
he was continuously told and a very stressful way saying that wh- whatever you are trying to do why are you wasting your time in maika maika is not the time for you you want to do films i will send you to a film director i will send you to a film producer etc kind of things they were very very insistent again very very stressfully that look i think you have chosen the wrong thing the idea is not that they don't want to take him the idea is not that that they really believe that they will connect somebody to a film director or a film producer in that sense but what they are trying to look at in such kind of a stress interview is to check whether you can hold yourself for that 15 20 minutes without crumbling and you know becoming little immature about it saying that okay sir if that is what you are saying let me take it off but if you ask me what is the most i mean what is that kind of an interview which is given most in most places it is always going to be an on stress interview i am amdabad i don't know anybody in this uh, today has got any i am amdabad call today, uh, uh, in this uh, group who are already listening to me but typically they kind of make you very very comfortable in an interview when you make when you are made uh, or when you are uh, given that kind of a comfort zone one of the biggest problems is that you tend to lower your guard the moment you lower your guard believe me any kind of question it looks the most innocuous question but if you are not able to answer it in a very uh, uh, structured very very mature way chances are that you are almost losing the chance to get in there chat in fact in my kind interviews uh, this guy i was talking to was telling that they asked some of the girls not all of them one or two girls saying that what kind of a husband do you want to have or what what kind of a husband do you want to uh, look for now it looks such an easy silly question but believe me ask a girl it's not an easy answer and forget about even it being an easy answer uh, easy uh, answer uh, or easy question for that matter in an interview when a uh, interviewer especially a professor is asking this question it becomes that much more difficult you might uh, uh, when people don't realize that when you are lowering your guard or making it so simple a non stress way believe me you make many more mistakes than when you are you know given stress interviews now having said this what interview you will get you will never know but there is a make before uh, taking forward to the next point mm-hmm. and that is till that point of the time when you are walking into the interview room they have zero idea about who you are i told you you are a number you are a registration number then why is it that they are putting in such kind of pressure or why are they trying to be very very nice to you very very neat to you there is only one reason for that it is to either put you under pressure or to kind of get you out of that comfort uh, get you into such a kind of comfort zone where you make mistakes you will see as i go along and talk about uh what is it that the uh, the institutes the iims etc are looking for in a good management graduate you will find out why they do what they do one last question one last thing about uh, a simple thing uh, about external interview external environments of an interview is the duration of the interview it could range between 5 minutes to 25 minutes or sometimes a little more does it mean that anybody gets a 5 minute interview are going to be uh, rejected or anybody with a 15 minute or 35 45 minutes interview is definitely selected the answer is no neither of the two cases will be true however typically a mba interview lasts between 15 to 20 minutes typically i am saying so but why do they give 5 minutes or 25 minutes for various external reasons if let's say Uh, they have to pack up by 6 and you are the last two or three people and the time is already 5:30 5:45 what else would they do but give 5 minute interviews for the last three people you may think that they are not interested in you the fact is they don't have time they have to pack up and go maybe they have a flight to catch so do not worry about what is the duration of the interview and typically after having seen and done that a lot of times of basic interviews the first 5 minutes are more than sufficient for a you know panel a good panel to judge where you are heading okay so that's a very very uh, 
broad view of what the external environment in is uh, external environment is and what you should expect but in when you're going to an nda interview or for that matter any interview the first two minutes matter how do you you know dress yourself how do you walk in how do you ent enter the initial two moments the way you sit the sitting posture the body language that you use and the language that used to be used in the interview and finally the conduct inside the interview room unless you have basics see these are nothing to do with actually the questions and answers remember that but these are hygiene issues basic hygiene issues when you are entering you will knock on the door even if somebody says please come in and if it is closed the door is closed and you are supposed to go in just knock in don't wait for them to ask you ask you to come in knock the door open the uh, knob and just get inside and say may i come in sir don't say can i come in sir just say use a simple word may i come in sir if there are sir there is a madam may i come in madam or if there are more than three people at the same time you see so may i come in simple forget about sir or sir, uh, sir the dress code and this is something very important which i am i have been telling this to lots of people you need to be completely and fully formally dressed when i say formally dressed it should be uh when i am saying formally dressed i am saying it should be with uh, a tie at the base minimum at the bare minimum when i am saying tie uh obviously formal pant and shirt with a tie for a man for a boy wherever possible in fact if it is possible do wear a blazer if you can also do it wear a suit but try to ensure that you are completely formally dressed that first impression of a dress itself and of course groom well so that you are giving the right impression and then with the right entry and the right sitting posture half the problems half the nervousness that you may have will get out if you are a woman typically i would say again wear business formals if you are comfortable with it if you are not or if you have not really ever uh, worn a business formal that's okay wear a nice salwar kameez but make sure that it is not jazzy it is not you know uh, very very uh, uh, like as, as if you are going to go for a movie kind of thing it's not very yellow or pink and etc kind of a red kind of colors make wear these kind of colors but sober to the eye the third but not the least if those of you those women who are really good at carrying themselves in a sari my recommendation is do wear a sari and go not because of anything else not because just because you wear a sari you will definitely get through but because it's an indian mba and a lot of people are uh, uh, and 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 typically a woman is far more graceful in general especially in india i think it could create the right first impression as far as the interview is concerned sitting posture i have said you have to ensure that you need to sit straight sit without any kind of a uh, uh, without any kind of a slouch kind of thing so you don't go back and slouch into the uh, almost like a couch potato kind of thing you need to sit straight and lean a little forward so that you show your interest your seriousness about the interview uh ideally you don't have to show off your religion when you are looking at when you are going to an interview kind of thing typically try if you can avoid unless it is very very essential okay language has to be very clearly english and your conduct has to be formal even if the interviewers are being very nice to you and they are jovial with you if they are making jokes on you or talking to you in english uh, sorry in hindi or any kind of your vernacular language you are it's a formal interview remember that any of these institutes they expect that you continue to speak in english and nothing else now here is where we are going to look at what do the interviewers look for are there marks that are there uh, parameters on which they give marks and the answer is yes they do there are parameters on which they give marks and these are some of the assessment parameters where if you can't answer well or if you falter you will get a 
lesser score in an interview. Remember also this that all these institutes, I am Ahmedabad, Calcutta, uh, Indore, have very very high percentage of uh, score for interview. In fact, let me just see if I can share with you one more uh, file. Let me just see if I can share an Excel sheet just for a, for a moment. Just one second, guys. Thanks, Saharsh. Um, as uh, Shika was asking, I'm just repeating this. She says, should I keep the hands on the table if there is a table between the panelists and yourself as an interviewer, uh, interviewee? The answer is no, you cannot keep it on the table. In fact, you cannot even keep your uh, uh, a file on the table, you need to keep both on your lap itself. Okay, the table belongs to the interviewer. Only if he or they, they allow, saying that, okay, you can keep it, then you say thank you and keep it kind of thing. You can carry pen and paper apart from the certificates. Make sure that you carry definitely the pen so that if they ask you a question, you are ready to answer or you will not ask them for a pen at that point of time. Be very, very clear about that. Okay. Now, as far as the assessment parameters, some of the basic parameters which are important, obvious parameters which I'm going to talk about, and then we'll discuss it a little in detail is level of knowledge. Guys, let me tell you one thing, whether it is group discussion or whether it's an interview. Without knowledge, if you kind of really try to, you know, bulldoze you your, your way through the interview, it's almost impossible. So therefore, let it be known that you cannot shake in an interview that easily of especially of your knowledge levels. The guys who are in front of you have been interviewing tons and tons of people like you for ages together. So therefore, don't even think that they may not know the answer for the questions they're asking. Chances are that they know much better than you do, okay? Therefore, the first assessment parameter on which interviews are going to be judged on, I mean, there, there are other parameters we'll look at, but level of knowledge, if you can exhibit decent, good knowledge in your interviews, I think half the problems are solved. Because even if your communication is bad, you, they know that, look, you will, you will be able to learn or you will be able to improve your communication. Okay? So don't, just don't worry about that at all in that sense. It doesn't matter, uh, Arnab, whether you use what kind of pen, just take a pen which writes. Very interestingly, Ashish is asking, am I supposed to smile the whole time in the interview? No, not really. If you keep on smiling, they'll say, what are you smiling for? All, I mean, if they might say, why don't you just close your, uh, uh, we don't want to see your teeth, close your trap, such kind of very, very nasty comments they can come out if you unnecessarily, you know, keep smiling kind of thing. Having said that, having said that, have a pleasant disposition in the interview. Don't be, you know, tensed or don't be, you know, uh, very, very aggressive. Just say, so, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a pleasant disposition, what I'm talking about, should be kind of uh, projected in front of the interviewers. When you talk about level of knowledge, there are two points which come into picture. Your ability to understand the issues, that is a concept, and your clarity of thought. It is not only about your subject, it's about any general issues, about social issues, your political issues, you need to have, for example, I was today in Bangalore taking up a GD on free basics, free basics, that is internet.org that uh, our friends Facebook had and now they are talking about as free basics. Is it really free, should it be banned, etc. kind of things. Now when you, when you are discussing a topic in a group discussion or actually in an interview, you need to be able to cover all types of ideas, why is it uh, why there is a hue and cry against free basics? What is the problem with it in the first place, etc. kind of things. Okay, so keep that in mind when you are uh, talking about conceptual clarity. And in the next 15 days to one month, a lot of interviews are there around first week, first week of February and second week of February. You have 15, 20 days to go still, guys. Today we are talking about only on uh, uh, 16, 17, 16th. In fact, today we are on, right? So you have enough time for us to uh, reach there. 
uh, for you to go through all the basic concepts, especially whatever the current affairs and uh, uh, general knowledge concepts. But where you won't be able to really have great concept is probably on economics, but having at least a rudimentary knowledge on that and you're, you're completely not clueless about it will be more than sufficient. We'll talk about some of these areas that you need to work on. Today's hot topic would be Startup India, probably. And uh, well, again, these startup, I mean, in the next 15 days, lots of things might change. By the time the interviews become March, uh, you can be clear, uh, you can be sure of that the budget will become the hot topic in the, uh, by that time. Okay? So these hot topics keep changing as per the season, but over whatever has happened in the last five to six months could be very, very important. If you're taking an interview in Delhi, they could get into the odd event rule for that matter. You know, they can get into such kind of things which are current at that point of time. If you go one month down the line and there is no odd event rule in Delhi, then nobody will bother about asking that question. So keep that in mind. Okay, so clarity of thought is very, very important when you have to look at it. Again, uh, some of you are asking a lot of questions. May I just uh, request you to hold on those questions for a little while so that some of these things will get answered and some of these things uh, I will answer after you finish the, uh, after the basic presentation is over, if that's okay with you, okay? The parameter which is definitely paramount apart from the basic level of knowledge is your communication skills. The better your communication skills, the easier it is for an institute to look at you and select you. There is a reason for that. The institutes are also desperate to take you. You might be very, you might be surprised. When an interviewer interviews a candidate, please realize that they are also desperate to finish their interviews and they want the right kind of candidates. When I'm saying they want the right kind of candidates, they want people who have basic knowledge at least, ability to communicate that knowledge properly. So if you're not able to communicate, even with a lot of knowledge, it, it could be a hindrance to your uh, selection. So therefore, one of the uh, parameters which is very important is communication skills. The fifth one, which becomes very important as far as an MBA again uh, interview is concerned is your planning of your career. Are you a person who have, has planned your career or are you a uh, you know, guy who is uh, uh, following a mob? Everybody in your college has written uh, the CAT exam and therefore you have written. Or do you have something different to talk about, something more uh, specific to talk about, about your own career and how you have, you know, uh, progressed in your career according to your own plan. That is becomes, in fact, we discuss about this as we go along. Basic personality is a very important thing which we talk about strengths and weaknesses, where the kind of strengths that they are looking at and of course, uh, not really bad weaknesses, so that you are, uh, uh, you, you have the right kind of strengths for a, uh, becoming a MBA or a manager kind of things. But if you notice, these are the broad, broad assessment parameters, okay? The last but not the least in this is probably the most important one which I wanted to discuss on. Just one second. In fact, let me do one thing. In fact, one of the things that I really, really give a very, very high weightage to and in, in fact, most institutes give a very, very high weightage to is reacting to a situation. You have level of knowledge of certain topics that you have prepared for. You have uh, definitely prepared for various institutes, the various ideas, whether it is your subject knowledge, your job or probably current affairs, all these things are you can prepare, but there are lots of times when they kind of grill you and kind of make you or force you to react to a situation. Like for example, I was telling you in the very beginning about this student who entered this Mica interview where he was grilled. Look, look, I will give you, what is your objective? He said, sir, my objective is to get into entertainment industry and probably at the end of the day, make movies. Why do you need Mica for that? You want, uh, you, you can easily do it without uh, uh, going through the two years of rigmarole in MICA. I will introduce you to a director. 
what will you do i mean i am pretty sure that i will give you a director can i call you can i should i call you kind of thing that the kind of way in which they do it looks like almost saying that you should say yes to them or there could be an ethical issues ethical issues are very very important too. how do you deal with ethical issues in fact lots of questions are coming in i will answer them one by one but what you need to realize is what they are really looking at is how positively you react to any given situation at that point of time in other words one of the biggest considerations when you are talking about all these assessment parameters is if you notice what they are really looking at is a person who is really really mature as an individual and who can take up responsibility of being a manager tomorrow or a leader tomorrow okay so keep that in mind when you are thinking about in fact there are lots of filler questions which keep coming in in interview in in the, in the real interview it doesn't even matter what matters is see for example they ask you who is the vice president of india hamid ansari you don't know that you can say sorry sir i don't know who is the president of ethiopia sorry sir i don't know what is the uh, capital of south africa sir i think johannesburg you will be wrong doesn't matter these things are not going to make a huge difference to you in that sense but if they ask you questions based to let's say free basics or net neutrality or swachh bharat abhiyan or odd even formula or st startup india that we talk about or make in india or make for india or whether um, chinese uh, contagion is going to really be affecting india these are issues which you are supposed to know or your subject knowledge you are supposed to know and be able to articulate them then similarly when they ask you what do you want to be 10 years down the line 5 15 years down the line you can't say that sir i have not thought about it you cannot say that simply because if you don't thought of, do not think about it i think you are in a wrong interview in the first place all these things are information which you already know and you are uh, probably uh, vomiting it out in an interview but any difficult ethical situation is where we are talking about reacting to the situation that comes in okay keep that in mind when we look at assessment parameters now lots of people are asking what are the questions and how do we answer why mba that is where i am going to talk a little bit about what what are the most commonly asked questions in the interview the first and the most general question which is asked is tell me about yourself what should i answer in a in fact let me let me take the next 5 minutes answering this question how do you answer this tell me about yourself question there is no one right way there is no wrong way in this but what are the ingredients which are required to to get a right thing about his answer okay there are points which i'm going to tell which i want you to make a note of if possible so that you can prepare a proper answer for yourself when you say tell me about yourself what are the there are some simple like five to six to seven buckets which you need to prepare for the first one is your a place of birth i'm just writing it very slowly uh, uh, so that you can make a note of it kind of things also place of birth and city of birth or anything to do with your upbringing at the initial stages of your life right the second thing the second thing that is required second thing which is required is about your school and college basic idea about this or third thing in fact it could be this could be the third one and the second one could be your parents and siblings fourth point which is possibly required in your interview is your uh, school college achievements this is not very clear today guys just bear with me achievements both on the co curricular and curricular five you will be required to know about let's say your in fact one area which in fact i i am not even saying strengths are important then your work experience 
six your interests and hobbies interests and hobbies if you notice all these things put together should have been you know it should come in with the help of talking about your strengths what kind of a person you are and how have you become one so very very typically tell me about yourself should have seven buckets typically seven buckets now when i'm saying work experience will tell you one where are you from i am from a small a village from tamil nadu or you are a small village from xyz or i am born and brought up in bangalore i am born and brought up in hyderabad in bombay whatever it is why is that important it gives somebody an idea of what kind of an upbringing it is then also when you talk about your parents and siblings and how they were that also gives him a little better idea then when you know that you have gone to a school or a college your uh, under graduation uh, and your graduation uh, graduate school and what kind of school and college you have gone to and uh, what have been there for your influences at that point of time will become easier for people to understand then comes even in the same school or college what have been your achievements what what are the things that you have done which kind of made you unique which kind of made you different from others that will, that will make a uh, that that kind of adds more value to you then comes your work experience saying that yaar where have you worked after your engineering or after your degree where have you worked where are you working as what as you are as working how long have you been working that will give again a much better idea about who the person you are and last but not the least about what kind of interests and hobbies that you have what kind of a, you know uh, avocations you have at in leisure what you do do you do any social activities social work activities etc kind of things will become a important thing this entire thing while we are discussing can also talk about sir when i was doing this i realized that i am good in something or i am bad in something i am my strength is this or my strength is that can come into picture as such rohan is asking even if you have four plus years experience should i include school and college 100% yes please realize that they are not looking at what have we done for the last 10 years or 5 years they are looking at tell me about yourself describe yourself understand they want to know who you are as a person so it's all the more reason that you need to go back and say hi what has been influenced all your life in fact when you talk about an sop which we will talk about most of these points come into picture too is it okay very good question aishwarya very good question actually she, uh, she is asking approximately how many minutes should i speak if i were you what i would recommend actually is prepare a long answer which could be almost one and a half to two minutes answer a little long answer and then make a shorter answer of 30 seconds and 40 seconds the idea is use the 30 use the 30 seconds to 40 seconds as the first answer and then elaborate that when it comes to the when if they think okay what else what else what else sometimes they ask okay what else can you talk about yourself that is where you elaborate and make it a little more in detail is that clear right next obvious questions which will be asked is on your subject even if while uh, i'll answer this question to you rohan even before you ask me even though you are four years of experience there is a possibility i'll be low although very low that they can ask you on your uh, subject that you have done in your undergraduate that is in your graduation so be careful about it when somebody says that because you have 3 years plus experience they will not ask you a single question in your basic please realize that 2 years more 2 years more you are doing academic study it's an academic course that you are getting into it's not a job which means to say what they are looking at is do you have the academic capabilities also or do you remember any of these academics uh, that you have done or uh, academics that you have ever uh, studied across so therefore while it has been a norm that they do not grill too much for a person with more than 3 plus 4 years experience into academics 
but unfortunately if even few questions come in like mathematics mathematics could be a very good question i am calculator as almost always we have seen out of five five out of 10 people in a panel are asked math questions in the math questions could be on probability it could be on differential calculus it could be on statistics or it could be on simple averages for that matter the idea is not what they ask they can ask you anything for whatever reasons in the world but whatever they ask these are something which you have done in your school itself nothing really really difficult having said this i already told you the duration of the interview is about 15 minutes on an average so if it's only 15 minutes it also is is all it's also true therefore that if they start grilling you on your work experience there will be hardly any time for asking subject question okay so the reason why they don't ask subject knowledge is not because you have work experience is because if they start asking you about work experience there is very little time available for them to even grill on the subject knowledge area one question if they ask about the low grades can i tell them that i was not too much into my college stream subject ashish singh is asking this but i'm sure lots of people have the same question especially if your graph is going down 10th 12th and degree especially the engineering you have been very bad see my answer to that question ashish is be very honest with you saying that sir i did not concentrate enough in my engineering that is the reason why i have got this mark having said that if you can also add that you really did some extra curricular activities sports activities activities outside your curriculum which kind of now make you believe that you should go into an mba that can add value sahars that three and a half years experience impact negatively not at all friend it should be positive for you while i know that some of these institutes do not like more than three and a half years of experience people but please understand across the world in the us and across the world i know for a fact that if you have five years experience you are considered much better mba material than a fresher now i'm not saying freshers are bad all i'm trying to say is that is what a european or a american uh, institute looks at there is a reason for that also only when you work for about 4 5 years or even 6 7 years is when you understand the nuances of basic management and then when you go to a course like mba you appreciate it much better people like us who are less than uh, in fact i did it without any experience when i did my mba a long time back uh, you don't appreciate completely at that point of time but that doesn't mean that you will never learn it or it's uh, not useful to do it as a fresher of course you i mean there are Uh, I am Ahmedabad has at least 25% freshers. IIFT, I was reading say that minimum they take 30, 35% freshers. So it is not that freshers are not important or are not taken. It's just that you are not very serious about it. You want to get your education, so to say, done away with, and therefore you are still in the you know as a student student mode. If you can utilize the two years properly, believe me, MBA is useful for anybody at. any stage of the game so whenever somebody asks you this question oh you are too old for an mba is sir I'm, i think i'm still too young for an mba kind of thing say it is that kind of confidence general awareness current affairs will be a in fact a lot of drilling can happen especially in the last one year things have happened in this country one and a half year after uh, the modi government has come into picture in fact if so, those of you are interested in politics and are you know uh, uh, following the international news there is a high high possibility that donald trump will become the republican candidate the democrats are in complete shambles it doesn't it appear that hillary clinton finally will go to or bernie sanders one of them will probably become the democratic candidate but they are really really end up negative uh, cloud there so they may ask about that one they may ask about iran iraq or rather iran and saudi arabia problem they can ask about anything under the sun now then you will be can unnecessarily panicking saying that sir kitna padhna chahiye how much can i study my answer to that is very simple what you can you do what you don't you say sir i don't know about this i didn't know anything about it in fact somebody asked me this question sir what should i do uh, if i don't know the question there was uh, somebody who was asked this question how do we handle such questions which are saying i do not know anything about uh, i do not know anything any any point in that 
answer is simple sir sorry sir i have not been i have not been able to understand i mean i have not come across this news item when i read it over the last few years that that the few days kind of that is the best way to get out of it Aishwarya will again uh, ask me a very interesting question. Why NDA? Uh, let me come back to that day. Don't worry about it. I'll come back to some of the questions which are important also. Then personality related questions. If you look at an I am Koi code form, I am Indore form, I am Shillong form, etc. Almost all of them have describe your strengths, describe your weaknesses, kind of things, or describe your extracurricular activities. why do they ask strengths and weaknesses they want to figure out whether you going to fit in their mba or not so therefore these are very important and when you say i am something is your strength please realize that you need to not only have it as a strength but also give a reason why you are saying it is strength similarly when something weakness you need to be able to explain why something is a weakness and how it has affected you whenever possible in a weakness whenever question like weakness is asked it might be a good idea if if you can also say how you are trying to overcome that weakness okay career related questions why do you want to do mba a lot of people are asking this question why mba why mba why mba uh why mba after engineering i mean everybody does that i mean in fact 90% of them are engineers only after mba so therefore if they are asking that question is only to kind of put you into some kind of a guilt trap or put you into the, go through a guilt trap kind of thing saying that look you will crumble in in the in the kind of pressure they put in about that why mba question mba as i said in the very beginning itself anybody can do it ba bcom bsc be btech doesn't matter why because it's much much more of a common sense Uh, area it is less to do i mean there are structures there are various things like marketing finance we need to study but if you don't have the basic ingredients of being a manager a structure uh, or communication skills and or analytical skills and or problem solving skills kind of things then you have a problem then you have a problem in terms of how can you become a manager tomorrow so therefore career related questions are always going to be asked to figure out whether you are really really uh, in it or not so why mba why do you wish to go for a management career uh, what would you be 5 years from today what do you how do you see yourself 15 years from today all these things are career related questions now you might wonder sir why do they ask don't they know that we want to uh, get money more money don't they know that we are sick of our own jobs don't they know that i don't want to do software guys they know that but there are hundreds and thousands of software engineers why are all of them not writing cat why is it that you are writing cat you might say tcs you don't you hate tcs i hope nobody is a tcs guy here or infosys for that matter or texinger or ibm or whatever else that is you just don't like your job that's why you are writing an mba but how many more people are there in your uh, team and your company who are not writing mba there are a lot of them right if that is the case why should they not ask this question because it is it is not a general question let me assure you this you are one among the very coveted few who even get into an mba interview room so therefore if you are going to be like a layman if you are going to be like anybody else why should they even bother selecting you so therefore perish this thought that they will why do they ask this silly question they ask simply because it is relevant and they want the pers- they want people who have some idea about themselves some ambition about themselves some career goal which kinds of puts them in the next two years the two years of their mba into some kind of a path where they can achieve their goals you know they want that zeal from the students there you go why mba lots of people what to do lots of people hate this question so what will you write why mba i mean sir i don't like my technical job that's what i was talking about but please realize 
as I just now said, that there is a reason why you are writing an MBA because your aspirations are higher. Your uh, let's say negativity to your college or it, uh, company itself is probably higher because you want to do something much better. Or more importantly, there is some serious goal that you want to reach. You can be an entrepreneur. You can always say that you want to be an entrepreneur and therefore you want to do an MBA. But then they will ask you, okay, what kind of entrepreneurship that you want to get into? What kind of an area you want to get into? Do you have a business plan? Do you, did you think about it? I'm not saying they're going to ask you a blueprint of your business plan, but they are definitely going to ask you which area, how do you plan to do it, how do you plan to raise your money, when would you want to start, how would you want to scale up? Basic broad ideas will always be asked when you say you are not, you want to be an entrepreneur. And if you want to get into a stress interview kind of a position, they can you know, reverse. Hey, you want to be an entrepreneur, why do you want to do an MBA at all in the first place? There are so many entrepreneurs who never did MBA. Take Mark Zuckerberg or Bill Gates or I mean hundreds of other uh, big shots who have just not done their MBA. Only the managers do MBA. So why do you, if you want to be an entrepreneur, I think boss, shoot, uh, scoot from here, get out from here. It's not even re relevant for you kind of statements people might make. But that is only to kind of throw you off balance. And that's where I'm talking about us reacting to situations too. So why MBA is a very, very important answer. And you need to think about it a little more before you kind of uh, decide that answer. Yes, Sathya uh, Daru, I obviously think there, what, there is nothing like a good answer or a bad answer. Uh, uh, what I am trying to explain to you once again is, what I am trying to explain to you is, you cannot, uh, it's, it's not the answer that is only which is important, it's of course of how you say it kind of things. Now, let's say Tanay is asking one more question, sir, I want to do civil services after my MBA. I am not very sure that you would want to talk about civil services in an MBA interview. What do you want to do? If you want to do civil services, why would you want to waste two years of MBA and then work for a year or two? Typically writing a civil service exam is not going to be easy. It's going to take your time, maybe about a year, especially if you want to write the mains paper. Prelims can be done without any preparation, but mains, it's not that easy to do without the, uh, without uh, at least a three, four months of Sincere, uh, you know, uh, serious preparation of that. So why would you even want to say it? But if you kind of blurt it out also, then you will have to kind of say that, sir, first and foremost, I wanted to understand the management, understand, work in the private sector, because much before going into the private sector, there is a lot of issues about the private sector, and the guys who are in the government, especially bureaucrats, do not know anything about the private sector because they have assumed, because they have straight away got into the uh, public sector without understanding. But if I work in the private sector for two, three years, especially after a manager and understand the managerial problems or the businessman's problems, then if as a bureaucrat, as a collector tomorrow or as a secretary of any kind of a joint secretary or a secretary of any industry uh, area, I think I'll be far more efficient and far more uh, empathetic to the business at hand and maybe it will be useful for our country too. That is one answer you can give Tane. Typically, you can avoid talking about civil services. I hope you got that. I'll I tell that answer also, Ashish. Don't worry about your question. So again, there is nothing right or wrong about an MBA. Each one of you is different. But when you give an answer to this question, you need to have yourself in that. You need to, it can't be a very general answer. You talk about yourself and then come to a proper, proper, uh, it, 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 there, there should be a you in that answer. If, whenever you give an answer, when you write an answer and if you replace your name with somebody else's name and it doesn't make a difference to the answer, then there is a problem with that answer. Which means that it's a too general an answer. Only you can say that my uncle was a, uh, entrepreneur and I got, uh, you know, really influenced by it. Nobody else can replace it except probably your brother who can say, okay, my uncle was so and so kind of thing. Right? Understand that. Last, but obviously not the least, the most commonly marked questions are uh, 
hobbies, interests, and extracurricular activities. They can grill you in that area. To, for example, you uh, you say I'm interested in cricket. They can get into understanding whether uh, Dhoni should be replaced even for one one day internationals and T20, or uh, do you think it was good idea to have two different uh, uh, captains for uh, different formats of the game? Such kind of questions can be asked, even a simple area like cricket. And if you are interested in any other area or any other interest like music or movies or anything else, be prepared to get a little grilled in that area too. Because they want to say, see, I, you are saying I am interested in that. So therefore, they will expect you to know a lot more about that. Simple. You cannot say that Aishwarya. Aishwarya is asking, Aishwarya Das is asking, sir, can I say, that I am interested in MBA because I am not interested in a technical field, I want a career change. So why don't you become a trapeze artist or a tightrope walker as they call it? Why don't you join a drama troupe? Why don't you become a, a sign, uh, let's say you are not interested in technical field, why don't you join movies? Why don't you become a politician? What's stopping you from those, those things? So there is no reason for saying that I want to change this, it's, it's not an easy, uh, easy thing that okay, if you can't do anything else, then teach types. You know, you have heard of it, huh? if you can't do, then teach kind of a statement. It's not that uh, for uh, anybody who doesn't have anything else comes to an MBA. In, in fact, it's going to be a very negative answer to give. Be careful about that. Because then you are basically saying that, yeah, my sub kuch dekh chuka hun, kuch nahi hai. so the last resort is my MBA types. These are some of the facts by students, which I am going to answer very, very quickly, so that you know. Is honesty, I mean, almost all of you are asking these questions, let me also put some more questions for you, for your understanding of it. Honesty in answering questions. Boss, please be absolutely, absolutely honest. I'll be honest on this one more way, is when I'm saying be honest, all I'm saying is don't ever lie. That doesn't mean you will tell all the truth. You need to package yourself, of course. You need to package yourself. But having said that, when I'm saying you need to package yourself, you need to also make sure that you do not lie ever in an interview. Because if once it is found that you are lying, then it's almost guaranteed that you are out. Not only out, there's a very big chance that they'll kind of debar you from that itself. So be careful about when you are saying that you want to, uh, whatever answers you are giving. Time factor we already discussed. Don't worry about if it's 5 minutes interview or a 15 minutes interview or a 45 minutes interview. Just try doing your best. The next question, as some of you asked, if you do not know an answer to the question, what do you do? If you do not know an answer to the question, friends, what you would say is, sorry, sir, I do not know. Or you can actually say, sir, I'm not very sure of this answer. I'm not, not very sure of this answer. Uh, can I guess? And go ahead and guess the answer if you want to. One second. Vinod, I am not sure what you can't see because I think uh, all of you can see the video and what is there on the screen. Yes. So I, I guess it's a problem with your uh, thing only, uh, you know, please check it out. Yeah, it looks like, I'm sorry about that. Next, reacting to various acts, comments of an interviewers. See, the interviewers are always going to kind of make fun of you. At least, yeah, please remember that from morning till evening that buggers are interviewing people like you. People who are, you know, basically coming for MBA so that you can make a lot of money. Okay, at least that is the way some of them think at least, the professors. So if they make some fun of you, please don't react to them. If they kind of are very nasty to you, do not react to them. React positively, smile them. Because please realize that that's also probably an act they are putting it up so that you don't, you crumble in front of them. That's reaction to the situations too. Eric, ethics. Let me tell you something, guys. I mean, I have said this in various other fora. I am telling you again. You have to be ethical in, in general in life. And most importantly, you should be ethical in an MBA interview. 
you cannot you 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 know for example they say the, the kind of the way they put it across is you are going to an interview especially in iim amdabad interview you have only 30 minutes to go you are riding a bike and suddenly you see that you don't have a, a license or you are cross the signal and the guy the, the police wala has caught you and he says boss pay 200 rupees bribe otherwise i'm not going to leave you or i'll have to kind of challenge you you need to take you to a court or whatever uh, shit like that comes in and he says just 200 and get it out of it what will you do most students will come back and say sir we will give the money and go because there is a iim amdabad interview is that what the iim amdabad guys are looking forward to my answer is absolutely no they are looking forward to saying that look boss this guy has got caught he has got caught in a wrong uh, wrong act how does he come out of it by bribing his way through or by at least trying to convince the chap that sorry sir i made a mistake i will not make a mistake again maybe i can make a challenge i don't have money right now i am going to an interview you know try something to get out of that extricate yourself from the situation ethically and that friends is very very important and please understand this is a small issue there could be a, a issue about a company where uh, the boss is asking you to bribe the client so that you get the order what would you do you know it looks easy that you you can't uh, you, you will say yes to it simply because it is a done deal because the way they kind of project it also saying that look if you don't get this deal the company is going to close down and or you are going to lose your job then what will happen you will say yaar so why should i lose my job let me just uh, bribe this guy that too it's company's money i am not bribing my my money i am uh, bribing company's money and it's the manager who is taking a decision or the ceo is taking a decision why should i bother okay so please understand that and uh, uh, be extremely extremely ethical about it if they ask me about my selection because of the reservation ashish they will not do that Uh, uh this question they will not ask you uh, for example you have an 85% dal or 90% dal you are an fcst or a obc they will never say that oh boss you are getting it through please understand that you are getting it through because you are an fcst kind of thing that would be completely completely unacceptable as a question and nobody will ever ask that question last question last thing at the end of the interview please get up properly say thank you to everybody take back all the files etc in proper manner and walk back slowly walk back fast and when you get out of the room when you get out of the room close the door slowly don't bang the door even if the interview was pathetic smile at the interview thank the people saying that sir thank you for the 15 minutes of interview i got really grilled in it if you really got grilled it was very nice hope to see you again sir thank you so much you walk now walk now. you know that kind of presence of mind has to be there don't say are are gaya vera life i was a very bad kind of an interview and you know you walk away kind of things if only one of them extends hand to shake then i am supposed to shake it 100% if one of them gives you a hand to shake you please shake it and look at others if they are also in a position to uh, you know extend their hands take it otherwise no okay otherwise if they don't if they are not forthright in coming and giving their hand for shaking of an interview don't you get up and say thank you sir kind of things and you know put your hands in front of them this is india still guys a little different from let's say us or a european b school okay if you do it in a isb interview it will be different but in a iim ift such kind of interviews i would avoid giving a hand unless the professors there uh, take the initiative for that any more questions tane is a very good question he has asked is it it is it, it, it is is it absolutely necessary to be sure of your field of specialization during the interview see you don't have to be absolutely sure but you should have at least consideration set sir i believe that finance could be my area of interest simply because i have done xyz in finance i have taken up one or two courses in my schooling 
or I have been very closely following stock markets or I feel that I am very good at numbers and I will be able to handle it better than let's say a marketing or when I look at my own self and I look at my uh, background, I feel that I will be able to do it kind of thing. Again, you don't have to be absolutely sure but you should definitely have some kind of an answer especially if you are not a fresher. This is a good question Ashish, if they give you choices between two different colleges and their college, let's say somebody asks you are going to an NMIMS interview and you have an IFT call also and they ask you between NMIMS and IFT which one would you choose? The fact of the matter is chances are very high that most of you will choose IFT. It, chances are also high that NMIMS guys know that you will choose IFT. So why then are they asking this question? They are asking this question friends only for one reason to see if you are basically diplomatic or not. They, they are not really looking at statistics there fine, and also not they are not even looking at honesty here. The reason they are not even looking at honesty here is the, for a simple reason that look tomorrow uh, if you don't get an IFT will you take an MIMS? If the chances are yes you will take an MIMS it is better that you don't say of course the IFT, of course the IIM Ahmedabad kind of an answer. To be a little more humble, a little more diplomatic thing that sir, I would be very happy to take up either of the two which comes in because in my consideration set I have looked at about 10-12 colleges where I would love to do my MBA from. NMIMS is definitely one among them and so is IFT. Between these two however, I probably will choose NMIMS over IFT even otherwise you might choose because NMIMS has uh, it gives me a core MBA whereas IFT will be a specialization in international business. While I am very much interested in international business, if given a choice, I would like to do my general management first and then take up anything else. If you are in IFT, you will say that sir, IFT is known in the top 10, I don't even want to consider any other if I get into IFT. That kind of a slight different answer you should be able to give it. If they offer you chocolates, if you are sure of it, take the chocolate, keep it in your uh, pockets, don't eat it then and there. If they give you tea, typically avoid taking tea because you can spill it over yourself. Be very careful about it. Ganesh is asking an interesting question. Give me one reason why we should not select you. There is no good answer for this Ganesh. But the reason they are asking you is to check out your presence of mind. Sir, if you are asking me one good reason why I should not take you. Uh, Honestly sir, I would like you to take me, but if there are reasons, the only possible reason is that there are other students who are taking uh, or giving you interviews today are much better than me, are much more qualified than me and probably you think that they can become better uh, MBAs than me and that is the only reason why you would deselect me or not select me. That is the kind of an answer Ganesh you can give. Oh very much Atane, if you do this, it is a very good idea, if it is okay to mention that I have talked to the current students at the college about the culture, catch, clubs, departments, if you can speak very confidently about that and talk about those clubs and teachers and everything else, it will be very 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 positive. While giving a call for the interview, do they mention that you have been called for HR only? I mean depends, if it is XLRI, yes they will be only for HR or for BM in that sense. Dev Malia, that is a very good question again, what could be the approach if they ask why MBA and not why M Tech or MS? In fact, it is an interesting question for all of you guys, why not question, not just about MBA but everything else, why not question, why not make your cricket a career, why not make uh, uh, why not start the startup that you want to start today itself, why not be an entrepreneur today itself, why do you want to do an MBA, why not, why not an M Tech? why not PhD, why not X, why not Y. These are questions which to only to take, uh, to, to, to kind of put you off. Whenever such a kind of a question comes, your answer should be sir it is not about why not I want to do M Tech. My idea is why I want to do an MBA. Once again the answer should be why MBA and completely avoid the why not part of it. Abhishek Murli is asking a very interesting question again. 
a lot of b schools focus on relevant work experience as someone in it with three plus years experience no uh, incidentally b schools don't bother about whether you want to switch or you don't want to switch except spgen spgen is slightly more uh, you know focused on it and simply because spgen gets companies which want people with relevant work experience in fact i said in the very beginning itself that look these institutes are also as worried about taking the right kind of a candidate so that they can place them later on so that's the reason why if you have relevant experience let's say 3 plus years in it and you want to get into it again it's that much more easier for 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 that institute to place you correct that is the reason why they would want but that doesn't mean you can't get into marketing or you can't get into finance kind of things so typically except for spgen i do not see too many institutes worrying too much about it what if my career now is different from the specialization i have chosen for mba see that's absolutely fine that's exactly the reason see there are two ways why mba all lots of you are asking why mba question what should i answer see why mba okay let me just put it a very uh, this thing for you why mba when you look at a why mba question see mba is the conduit it is your path to a goal let's say there is a goal here somewhere and this is your past this past includes your school your college your work experience your uh, activities your experience and whatever else and your strengths from your past strengths and activities you decided that mba is the right thing for me to do that is one way of giving an mba answer the other reason for that is also a reason for why why management career the other reason for this is boss i have an aim i have a goal it could be entrepreneurship it could be becoming a ceo it could be starting up uh, something along with somebody else or etc etc whatever i mean uh, it need not be any one particular goal or as sanay said uh, eventually be a civil service guy for that goal how does mba help you how does this knowledge at mba will kind of create paths to this kind of a goal so a typically a statement of purpose will have all these things a statement of purpose has everything your past your curriculum your your uh, past activities your achievements your strengths because of which you want to do an mba why do you want to do an mba what do you want to learn here learning what learning will be there which will kind of get you to a goal you understand that that is what sudipto you need to be worried or concentrated about but if you do say that i am interested in marketing they can ask you marketing concepts if you do say you are interested in finance they will ask you uh about the those uh, they will definitely ask you on uh, finance concepts it's, it's basic basic concepts like the, for example they can ask you in finance what are the different areas of finance which are there are the different kinds of companies which are there in finance tell me five companies which are there in finance if you are a girl and you want to be an entrepreneur or you want to be a uh mba girl they will ask okay tell me five women entrepreneurs in the country or they can ask you five women ceos in the in in, in india in various uh, institute uh, various uh, organizations etc kind of things see why not something whenever somebody is asked such dru you are not going to discuss the why not part but the why mba part you will only come back to that why mba whenever they say hey why not do an ms or an mtech you seem to be excellent in technicals why are you wasting your technical knowledge sir it's not about wasting technical knowledge or doing an ms or not doing an ms it's about why i want to do an mba why because that is the reason why i am right now in front of you that's what you should do. not really then if you do not know this that's a bad thing i am or autonomous colleges do not have uh, they don't even have an aict approval they are parliament driven and hence they can give only a diploma there is a act if they are been uh, created as an act of parliament the same act of parliament the new iim bill proposes to make or give the authority for the institutes like iims to give a uh, mba degree sorry not aict ugc only university grants commission 
can award the degrees and uh, MBA, the IIMs are not recognized by UGC, hence they cannot give you an MBA, please understand that. This once the act of the parliament, uh, once the new act comes in, it will automatically become MBA. So you can't ask this question at all. Absolutely not. It's okay to have three months of gap. It's not an issue at all. Prakar, what I was talking about SPJN is, SPJN is the only institute which insists that if you have IT background, you should take up IT uh, specialization. If you have operations background, you should take up operations uh, specialization kind of thing. It's the only institute. Nobody else focuses and or insists on that. Abhishek Murli, you have an SPJN call. If you have, just uh, text me your email ID. I uh, will um, give you my uh, phone number, etc. in a little while. Uh, please text me because I plan to take a class tomorrow evening for all the SPJN guys who are on 19th, 20th. Oh, perfectly. Uh, all right, Prakar. Not an issue at all. Okay. Now, these are some of the email IDs I am giving you guys. I will, don't go away. It's not done. I am going to talk about the SOP and uh, form filling in a moment. Okay? Don't go. We are here. This is my name. My name is Arks, A R K S Srinivas at A R K S S at Vishamind.com. Nishant sir, who is in uh, Chennai, he is Nishant at Vishamind.com. And another person who has been in touch with you most of the times, he is also uh, handling the WhatsApp group. He is also A Srinivas. He is A dot Srinivas at Vishamind.com. Uh, Nishant is an I am Koi Code graduate. Srinivas is an I am Indore graduate, I am from I am Calcutta. We have another five, six people who will be taking up these interviews online also, who are all from IIM and one person from XLRI. We will be there to help you out through this entire period for the next one month or one and a half month or so till you finish your interviews. Almost every day there will be some kind of a class or the other, especially an online class on general awareness or general knowledge topics, which are relevant for group discussions, WAT as well as your interviews itself. Okay? Get going guys. We will be there to help. But again, don't go away. I am going to stop sharing this and give you a uh, idea about how form filling is required and also the SOP. Uh, how do you make an SOP? Okay? Just give me one moment. Good evening once again. Uh, I am now going to take up a very important area called making a SOP, winning SOP, the statement of purpose. Writing a statement of purpose is not an easy job. Therefore, if you know what to do, it becomes that much, much more easier for one to, you know, start with the extra head start in an interview itself because you are already, uh, you know, thought through your process and why you want to do an MBA and what you want to do after an MBA. So we look at what should be the do's and don'ts of a SOP and what are the ingredients of a SOP which kind of make sure that you are uh, ready for it. Apart from this, I am also going to talk about some of the points which are there or the, uh, uh, what, what do you call it, the questions which come in these forms and how do you fill them up, okay? Preparation hurdles. Now this is something which I have heard all the years, the last 15, 17 years at least. And I hope you will not be one of those who will be coming out with these kind of excuses. I don't have time to fill. I shall do it tomorrow. I have a few days for deadline. Uh, I mean, why should I write it? I, I would like to write it very well later on. Why do they ask such funny questions? What's wrong with them? You know, or do they expect me to be brutally honest? Should I be diplomatic in my answer? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, kind of questions keep coming to you. My answer to it is, look, whatever the preparation hurdles may be, forget about that, start writing the SOP very, very clearly. Let's look at what are the ingredients of a SOP. These are the six points typically, or seven, six points typically that a statement of purpose should have. In fact, make a note of it yourself if you are there sitting with a pen and paper. You should have your background, personal as well as professional background. It's almost like you tell me about yourself question, guys. Then influences in life, activities undertaken during school, college or work that define you, that will kind of give you 
what kind of a person you are and how you are kind of things what achievements are achievements in school college social activities see even at social level you would have done something at at in your uh, uh, mohalla in your uh, apartment and etc kind of things or in your area what kind of achievements what kind of things that you have done will also become a very very important part of your sop career goals and why they are important for you that is so what are your career goals and therefore so typically tell me about yourself along with career goals and why the business school that you are applying will make a sop we just talked about uh, tell me about yourself n number of things add to that your career goals and how and why do you and what, how do you plan to achieve them with the help of the b school that you are applying to if you can get that answer you have got an sop ready is that clear how do you write the first first and foremost there is something which we have always said and i want to uh, make it into a, a, a i want to give you as a advice itself saying that first get all the ideas in one place so first start thinking about your school you know, open an a page open a word document and start writing about what all you remember about your school probably write what all you remember about your birthplace and how what your influences have been at that point of time write all about what are the positives and negatives about your school at the time of school before 10th or 11th and 12th then go back to your college every year of college go back and say what are the good things that you have done bad things that you have done positives negatives uh, likes dislikes whatever that may be then when you come to your work experience look at what happened in the first 3 months of your training period how did you get placed in a project what did you do which project did you do well which way, which project did you get any accolades for what did i mean you know, everything and anything make it into a semi autobiography without worrying about the length of it make it as big as possible in fact what lots of people think that okay i am shillong sop is only 100 words so i should start writing only 100 words please don't do that that's a wrong thing to do first write 1000 words then we can reduce it to 100 words by throwing uh, using uh, by pressy writing once you get all the ideas in place and a semi autobiography of 1000 1200 1500 words then you will start removing and proofreading so they drop all the areas which are not relevant or cannot you know does not uh, show a path to an mba anything which is not with an irrelevant from the story of mba then you rewrite an abridge to get a coherent write up get it reviewed by friends and then by experts send it to me i mean that's what i'm saying i'm an expert types what i'm trying to say is not just me my entire team we will help you to kind of finally review the sop once you have done that but please do the first two three parts yourself so that it becomes much better and we are only going to give a critical acclamation to that in fact there are questions which are asked in the interview did you go to a coaching class for your gd interview or for your cat my answer to that question is yes of course sir i have went to that i mean without even thinking without batting an eyelid i said yes sir i went to the coaching class oh that means your answers are all your coaching class answers absolutely not sir the reason i went to a coaching class sir there are about 1 and 1/2 lakh people who go to the coaching class only about 5000 make it to the iims even in gdpi probably about 10000 people go to the coaching class only finally 5000 people make it so the ratio of 1 is to 2 is means that i still have to put in my efforts sir what i have got in my coaching class is an only a direction they have not wrote, written my uh, sops or my uh, answers at all they only corrected and pointed out issues where i should be clear of because i am very serious about this interview and i want to get through this uh, institute and therefore i have taken professional help from these and most of these guys are from the iims themselves they have worked there worked in the industry for so many times and are there for helping us out sir so you can very strongly without batting an eyelid talk about that look i have taken in a coaching institute why i am saying is please understand that while the i am some of the people may be negative against uh, you know coaching institutes if there is no i mean there is nothing wrong about going to coaching institute because there is something that you want to really really do understand some of you leave your jobs for writing cat is it really required for writing cat that you need to leave your job 
The answer is no. But why do you do it? Because you are not getting time at all to prepare. I give you a capsule of an economic session or a subsidy session or a Swachh Bharat Mahan or anything else, which will take you four, four hours to do it. There are better ways to learn rather than trying to do everything on your own. And that's the reason why somebody goes to a coaching institute. That's what I wanted to say. So coming back to this, please get it reviewed. Make sure that you write your soft in such a way that, you know, any loopholes which are there, we will try to create. Or even if there is a loopholes, what we are going to do is, you know, not necessarily loopholes. What I'm going to tell you is what could be the follow-up questions from this SOP so that you start preparing for those things. Fair enough? Next, do's and don'ts of a SOP. Use simple language, short sentences, avoid flowery language, avoid quotes unless it makes sense and they are really, really your quote. Lots of people write quotes without making any sense of it and any, no link to what they want to write in a song. It has to have a meaning and it has to have and uh, I mean, uh, some kind of a linkage to yourself. If there is no linkage, don't even use the salt. Avoid examples of achievements from school or primary level. If there is nothing else, you will use it, but at least as much as possible avoid too far back in the past. As much as possible, the recent past is important. Somebody was asking, Arjun was asking me, should I hide this three months of a gap? Even if the gap is one full year, no point in hiding the gap. Be truthful. Nobody is going to reject you because you did not do anything for one year or you did not have anything great to do for one year. In a career spanning 35-40 years, guys, half a year, one year is not an important thing at all. Yes, you can, Vinod. Be honest with your SOP. Very, very honest as much as don't put any lie in that at all. Now, as far as filling up the form is concerned, use a photocopy of photocopy of the form and fill that first so that you get the correct length and the suitability of the sock in that sense of the word. So that there are no spillovers into extra extra things kind of things. The first time you write the you know, you will only transcribe from a photocopy into the real copy when it finally happens. If the word limit is not mentioned, the long maximum long of the shock should be about 300 to 350, 400 words, not more than that. If there is a word list, for example, in Bangalore, 600 is the uh, word, uh, the uh, word list, uh, sorry, word uh, limit mentioned. More, some of them will say 100 words. Typically, they will say 200, 400 words kind of things. 200, 250 is fine. So you would use that. Don't use extra space unless specified. Try to keep the margins. Use space very evenly. Do not overwrite and make it illegible. Do not copy from SOPs of others. You cannot defend others' answers, guys. This is one of the reasons why, as a very, very simple professional ethics, we do not write your SOPs at all. While there are enough institutes in the world which will write, who can write your SOPs uh, and for a uh, for a charge, let me tell you, we are not going to help you write. We are not going to write the SOPs for you, but we are going to help you make your SOP better so that you can defend it properly, properly. Uh, Vinod, I said you can uh, you can write you can use it. Then prepare the follow up questions from the shop. Okay, pre pre prepare follow up questions based on the SOP. What are the questions which can come in kind of things? Now let's take up form one by uh, form uh, one after the other. Satyendra, I am going to answer that question. Uh, Abhi Narayan, uh, you are saying I am a Shillong. These are the questions from I am Shillong. Describe your strengths. When you are describing your strengths, 50 words, typically don't write 50 adjectives for your strengths. Pick three most important strengths and for each strength, write why you think is a strength or where you found that this strength was useful or an example why, why this was your strength. Typically, a sentence would be about 14 to 15 words along with the word, that strength, whatever the strength that you might have. So three strengths will be comfortable for 50 words. 
so is exactly the case with weaknesses but whenever you are writing weaknesses as i said in the previous uh, uh, in the uh, uh, previously you need to also make sure that weaknesses also have the how you are planning to overcome them if not for all the weaknesses at least for one or two of them which are uh, you know uh, slightly difficult like i am short tempered sir i have been short tempered sir but i have been trying to kind of reduce that short temperedness because i see in a professional setup i cannot keep uh, losing my top so whenever i am angry because of which i short tempered or because i am anxiety or because of uh, some kind of things which doesn't happen at the time i want it to happen i kind of count 1 to 5 or i kind of take deep breath before i react to situations something of that sort you can say so that you are saying you are getting out of the weakness extra curricular activities again don't use too much flowery language write simple language so that there is enough content in the uh, answer give details of your accomplishments in your hobbies any position in student association volunteer organization etc the problem with i am shillong the thing is he is asking you all these things and then he is asking you an sop in other words sop typically will talk about your career goals why you want to get reach the career goals uh, why they are your career goals and how i am shillong is going to reach make you reach them. that is what is going to be your sop now you understand answer the uh, you understood the adi what you will avoid strengths weaknesses extra curricular activities and your accomplishments because you are already coming with them only thing that you will write is look i am from so and so background my influences have been so and so and my ambitions are so and so to get those ambitions coming through i would like to use i am shillong's platform where you need to talk one or two words about i am shillong also is it okay if you explain well only one point for strength and weakness in stroke three no you please do all three there should be at least three strengths and three weaknesses in your i am shillong interview typically you can't say i have only one strength and only one weakness kind of things this is my recommendation for sure okay worst case you can have two weaknesses instead of three weaknesses that's all and last but not the least employment details current job description roles and responsibilities people write in a very very pathetic manner roles and responsibilities i am my role is to kind of ensure that all tickets when it comes to me uh, all uh, i i kind of redistribute to my teams what's a great deal about that or i am supposed to solve uh, any problems which arise in the uh, uh, client end or some such kind of statements please be a little aware please make sure that you put it in one two three four points so that it becomes uh, very specific to your employment if there are doubts as uh, uh, satdru has asking you can mail it to any of the three of us or if you are in uh, calcutta you can send it to ankuran sir or sunita ma'am they will definitely definitely review it if you are in mysore you can always give it to geeta ma'am and she will review this also okay i am koi code has slightly different kind of questions they have a very interesting question instead of asking why mba they ask you why do you wish to go for a management career this is different from why mba why mba is probably because of your goals to a large large extent therefore you are doing an mba but why do you wish to go for a management career is not just about your aspirations it also about your strength it's about your achievements it's about what makes you stick or pick to a management career the reason why they give this is because there is a immediate follow up question which says what alternate careers are you looking for apart from management why do they ask you again the same thing why am i doing management because i have analytical skills i have problem solving skills i have the take ability to take responsibility i am a person who is you know so and so so and so so and so and therefore with these kind of things ingredients or strengths in mind i believe that management will be a very very suitable career for me that's the way the answer should come up similarly alternate career saying that what other skills that you have which can kind of use it to for a uh other alternate careers that if for just in case you don't have any alternate career and sooner or later you want to do an mba you can as well mention that also ravi the first line you sent it is the first form the one which you going to get it on 26 that is after the second short list which is the gdpa short list will have all these questions
similar answer and ankit is not going to be a problem don't worry about it i mean i hope you have not just copied it that's all i can say similarly in iron koi code also there are strengths described strengths and weaknesses very interesting the three interesting questions which are asked in iron koi code what is your most significant achievement once again if you write a shop where you go back to your school your college your work experience your social life your personal life all these things you will be able to pick it out in the order of preference what is the most significant achievement till now don't tell that the most significant achievement in your life till now is to get this iim koi code call that will be very cheesy to uh, even put it across so don't say it at all Sure, we know. We'll do that. Okay. Then, most important situation where you exhibited leadership skills. This is another interesting question which comes in. Where you need to figure out again. Don't this next one. Look at this most important situation where you exhibited your to, uh, exhibited ability to work in teams. You can't say the same thing in both the things again. i i was also a leader i was also a team player there is a difference between being a team player and a leadership in a leadership you take the leadership role the mantle you give you take the responsibility give the people their jobs and but you take the responsibility for both failure as well as success there is in a team skill there is a different thing in a team skill what you are looking at is identifying the value the, the abilities of each of the team members let's say you do a project together one guy may be good in java one guy may be good in database one guy may be good in architecture one guy one guy may be good in uh, let's say the front end making the front end kind of thing so and one guy may be good in you know uh, presenting things uh, in ppts to the bosses you need to figure out who is good in what and come together and solve the solution how did you do it did you do it or not that is what is uh, working in a team solution all about i am bangalore is very simple this is exactly what i have told you till now prepare a short essay of 600 words on yourself in the space provided you may wish to talk about your background your significant achievements your accomplishments experience at work extracurricular activities relationship with your parents and friends and family plans and how pgpm of i am bangalore fits into your dreams and ambitions please make sure that your essay forms a coherent whole in fact that's exactly what i said about a saw start working on it very very simple, uh, straight away right away so that you are ready for the saw you are ready for the uh, you know you will have to fill up the forms if i'm, I'm just giving you the iim forms all these forms nmim is also has a saw career uh, uh, let's say Uh, I am Calcutta has a, so, uh, a statement which says what are your career goals. FMS has a SOC. Uh, I mean everybody has a SOC yeah, in one way or the other. Only I think Lucknow does not ask for anything else except extracurricular activities. Everybody asks some question or the other. If you prepare right away, then wait for these things to come in. You will be ready for your mock interviews also at least, and you will be also ready for writing all these answers. in one shot so prepare your soft at the earliest send it to us we will review it and we will kind of uh, give you what else you can write so that it becomes a perfect soft okay typically ravi for uh, some of these institutes you need to write it in pen in some places you can upload it which ones will be what will be different i am b should be in separate paragraphs yes Muhammad Ashraf. Uh, indoor form, I have not. In fact, unfortunately, I have not got indoor form till now. Do you have any questions which have been given in indoor form? Or if there are any specific questions which are different, yeah, that's what I'm saying. We have not received it yet, and uh, they see. Typically, this will be some of the forms that they will. Uh, Uh, these are the kind of questions they they will ask uh, but i do not have an iim indoor form this year so therefore i cannot comment on it if the moment it comes in those of you who have iim indoor calls i will personally reach out to you and make sure that you are ready for that don't worry about it okay so that so guys the way forward from now onwards is 
there will be classes every day or every other day where we will take up classes i already told you plus uh the we will start the mock interviews all the people who are in any of the cities in the country doesn't matter we will also start giving you online interviews the very particular reason why online interviews could be useful and please be very ready for it it is going to be uh, it's going to be two way communication that way the very idea of uh, online communication is, uh, online interview is we can also record it so that you have a background of what kind of questions were asked and what your answers were and how can you make it better and better late in the evenings also we can give you uh, this uh, interviews or we can mutually decide on what times i will have one or two people deputed only to schedule your interviews over the next 10 days in that sense fair enough but may i say something we are here to help you but we will only be able to help you provided you put in that effort to start preparing for yourself remember if you don't prepare for these interviews guys you will cut a very sorry figure in your interviews and that will be very very bad you have excellent chance of getting if you get a call you have an excellent chance of getting a final selection and i'll tell you from my point of view from mr mind point of view our idea is if i can if i have 100 students i may not have more than 100 students this year for the iims and other top institutes if i can convert every one of these 100 it's going to be a great achievement for us that doesn't mean we can do it without your help similarly you cannot do it probably without the kind of extra help that we can give you then let's do it therefore together not really it doesn't really play it's only for selection for the gdpi arjun okay so there, there there we go friends i think we have done a fair bit of learning today of what an interview should be and what uh, you should be doing some faqs what do's and don'ts about a sop and etc now if you have start having questions i have given you my email id also now i am just putting across my number you are already have it those of you are on uh, whatsapp uh, any of the whatsapp groups that you are my number is already there with you that's my number and another person you you can continuously be in touch with i am not available is srinivas his number is very simple i am just putting it across to you here yes sir i also did that you should write it in separate three paragraphs or four, four paragraphs in the entire uh, sop there is enough space given to you for that okay there are a r k srinivas that is me and a srinivas who is my colleague also my executive assistant and an iim indore grad 2010 pass out so we are going to be there there are other people in other cities but we both of our are in bangalore to kind of uh, coordinate this entire effort for the entire country as such it should be like a story ravi not like a pointers i'll stop recording by the way okay so let's do it uh i i i uh, the schedule will be put up on your website as well as it will be sent to you on your whatsapp yes if those of you are not on whatsapp please uh get in touch with one of us so that you are uh, given this information continuously ideally yes sadhguru okay so for example i am the bangalore interviews are from february 7th 8th 9th kind of things so we can give one interview in the next one week itself similarly uh, spj interview is there on 19th for some of them so i plan to do one kind of a one hour session with this uh, spj guys tomorrow abhishek murli if you have spj please message me on my uh, whatsapp etc then avoid uh, writing anything great about roles and responsibilities of him just write what you have done till now without worrying about it they will not give you any great uh, negative marks for it also you know okay so there we go guys thank you so much wish you all the very best and uh, see you very soon for other classes that i'm going to take up okay good night thank you anirban bye tane